We got one. We got one. Whoa. Is that a red ring? Yes, it's a red ring. Red ring number two. Wow. <gasps> red ring number three. And this one is perfect. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah, he did what? He didn't drop another red ring. Hey, everybody, it's Curse. And today I wanted to bless you with something special. A few days ago, we were working on completing our unique ring prophecies in order to farm some red rings. And we got quite lucky. We dropped four red rings in a matter of three to four hours. They just kept on coming. So naturally, I was wondering, did we get lucky? I wanted to know the exact amount of luck that we ran into that day. And so, as you can see in the background, I went and I counted exactly how many unique rings we dropped during the course of that day. And then I calculated the exact probability that a unique ring becomes a red ring. And I'm not talking estimates here, I'm talking the exact percent chance. Once I got all of that information, I calculated the exact probability of getting four rings given the number of unique rings that we dropped that day. And let me tell you, the results were quite interesting. And I learned a lot about drop rates and how drops in general work in last epoch because of these efforts. So I wanted to share some of these learnings with you as well. I'm going to tell you the expected amount of favor that you need to spend on unique ring prophecies in order for you to get a red ring. And I'll walk you through the estimation process as well. So you can double check it for yourself and see if maybe we missed something. But more importantly, just so you can understand how drops work as well. Anyway, I'm going to warn you, this video is very spreadsheet heavy. But even if you ignore all of the math, you can still get value from the results. Anyways, let's jump in. Irashimase! So as you saw in the intro, and I really hope you enjoyed the intro by the way, because it took me a while to count a thousand 386 unique rings manually. I wish there was some sort of program that would do that for me, but no, I counted them one by one. And sometimes I had to double count because things weren't adding up. You know, it has to be an even number because we're COF and everything gets doubled. Anyways, we dropped 1,386 unique rings that day. And what we're trying to figure out is what is the probability having dropped that many rings to have had zero red rings or one or two or three etc etc all the way up to 10 on that day as well as what is the cumulative probability to have dropped let's say something like three plus and that requires for us to know the exact chance of a red ring drop that's where we're going to get started we're going to figure out the exact probability to get a red ring drop and the best starting point for that is frozen spreadsheets right here Frozen has put together essentially every single unique item and it, he has them categorized by group, by type, by rarity. And he also has some simulation data, which then he uses to get the percentage chance for those, let's say, unique rings to drop out of a unique ring prophecy. So before we get started, we have to make a copy of this. Once we have a copy, let's just filter on rings just so I can show you what I'm talking about. So now we have all the rings that are unique. I dropped the set ones. And you can see Red Ring of Atlaria is extremely rare. It has a 98% reroll chance. And based on Tank Lab's unique sim with 10 million echo rewards, we get a chance roughly of 0.1717, etc., etc., to drop a Red Ring. However, this is an estimate. It's based on simulations. It's imperfect. And I want to get the exact number, the exact probability of getting a Red Ring. Not only that, but there's something wrong with the data. If you look at Sunwreath, for some reason it only has 21,000 unique sim drops. That really doesn't make sense, given that the reroll chance for Sunwreath is 0%, as you can see right here. It should be roughly 52,000 drops of Sunwreath. So there's some sort of a typo here, there's an error, and that's just a byproduct of doing things based on simulations. Uh, so let's actually calculate the exact drop chance of red ring. All we need to do to get that is add an extra column and let's call it drop weight. And that's gonna be one minus the reroll chance. So the drop weight of red ring of Atlaria is 2%. And based on that drop weight, if you get a unique ring prophecy, 
the drop chance of a red ring of atlaria is going to be two percent divided by the entire drop weight of the pool of unique red rings it's that simple so it's two divided by 1207 and then in order to get the actual drop rate of every single one of these items all we need to do is rather than dividing the number of simulated drops of whatever item this is let's say arboreal circuit divided by the total number of simulated unique ring drops instead of that we take the drop weight of that item so in this case it's going to be 100 percent divided by the total drop weight of unique rings it is that easy to get perfect accuracy for every single item in the drop pool of the prophecies that you're looking to run you'll notice the output is pretty similar to the simulated output so that's good to see it should be similar the only discrepancy is as we notice the sun wreath for some reason this number is just not quite right and also this number by the way is skewing every other number in here if we go back here and overwrite the 21k for sun wreath with whatever we pick that uh, should be similar to it with drop weight of 100 percent if we do that you'll see the numbers align much better and again, huge props to Frozen for putting this together without having the spreadsheet to begin with and to just as a starting point, I probably wouldn't have bothered trying to calculate all of these exact uh, drop rates. I'll get in touch with him and hopefully I can convince him to update his spreadsheet to have exact drop rates rather than these simulated numbers. Exact is always better than simulated if it's attainable, of course. And just to highlight a little bit more on why this math works out, something that really tripped me up in the past is how these reroll chances work. I was always trying to figure out in my head, okay, well, if I reroll 98% of the time, in those instances, 98% of the time, is it going to be rerolling with red rings still in the draw pool? Is it going to be rerolling a unique ring still? And the answer is yes, it's going to be rerolling a unique ring. And yes, it's going to be re-rolling with red rings too in the pool. I, at least I believe that's the case. And so what ends up happening is if you have a drop weight of 1207, that's when you get a guaranteed drop, nothing re-rolls. But you also have a scenario of 393%, which is roughly, let's call it a quarter of all scenarios in, in terms of unique rings. In a quarter of instances, you're going to get a re-roll. And what that means is you're again going to be subjected to these percentages and these weights of every single drop. So even though you're re-rolling, the chances of getting a red ring is still 2% divided by 1207, 0.1657% chance to drop that red ring. And yes, you can still get an infinite loop of re-rolling, but whenever you enter into that loop and whenever you actually drop something, it's always going to be with that exact same probability. So the reroll chance ends up being irrelevant and all that matters is the drop weight. I had to think that through a bit in order to make sense of it. So I'm sharing it with you. Hopefully it makes sense to you as well. And if you don't agree with that logic, let me know. Maybe we're missing something. You never know. These uh, things are complicated. We don't actually get to see the code. We're just kind of making logical assumptions and logical leaps based on simulated output that we get and stuff like that. And so now we have the probability of dropping a red ring from every single unique ring. And it is this number right here, 0.1657%. Next, we want to calculate the probability of dropping exactly, let's say, zero or one or two, two, three, four red rings, given this many unique ring drops, and given this probability of a red ring dropping from every single one unique ring. And for the record, this percent chance of a red ring translates to one ring every 603.5 unique rings. And even with the knowledge of this expected unique ring per red ring drop, we can already tell that with 1,386 unique ring drops, we should anticipate around 2.3 red rings. So we already know that four red rings dropping from this many unique rings was fortunate. But exactly how fortunate? Let's figure this out. In order to calculate the probability of each one of these events, we know that a red ring dropping or really any item dropping and it being a true or false outcome, that translates to a binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution is something easily available to us in Google Sheets. You can see you just need to specify the number of successes. So that will be column C. We are looking at 0, 1, 2, 3, or maybe let's say 4 successes. The number of trials, 
that is column A, and then the probability of success, and that is column B, the red ring probability of success. And this is just a Boolean on whether or not we want the cumulative distribution. And so when we plug that, we get a 10% chance out of 1386 unique ring drops to get exactly zero red rings. That would have been a sad day. If we got zero red rings after so many prophecies, I'm not gonna lie, I would have been a little bit disappointed. And now let's check out the rest of the probabilities. As you can see, the highest probability is uh, to drop two red rings. And that makes sense given our estimate here of the expected value of 2.3 red rings. And surprise, surprise, we actually had an 11.67% chance to get four red rings. Hey, that's not too bad. We had a one in 10, roughly one in 10. Let's call it one in nine. That was a one in nine chance to get four red rings. And we nailed it. We nailed it. And to give ourselves some credit, we actually had a 20% chance, which is one in five, to get four rings or better. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine getting 10 red rings out of 1386 unique rings? We had a one in 10,000 chance to get that, roughly. So there you go. We had a one in nine chance to get four rings given all of the prophecies that we fulfilled. Then we got a little bit lucky, but it wasn't as lucky as I thought it was. I was actually expecting to find out something like, you know, we hit a three percenter or something like that. But an 11 percenter, or if you look at it from this perspective, cumulatively, four plus, four or better, a 20 percent or one in five, that's not that bad. That is uh, certainly more likely to happen than nailing a two LP slam. Two LP slam is a one in six to get the exact two affixes that you want. And this is a one in five. So I'll take it. And as a bonus, let's calculate the expected favor per red ring. We already know how many unique rings we need in order to get a red ring as an expected value. So all we need is to calculate how much favor we need to spend for every single unique ring. And the best way to figure that out is by using frozen stables. And one more time, let me just highlight props to frozen. Thank you so much, man, for putting these together. We would not have been able to get such incredibly accurate estimates without you putting together all this infrastructure, both for the unique items and for these prophecy calculations. Let's just use it here and I'll include the, a link to uh, Frozen's channel. So make sure to give him some love. If you need to look up these tables, I'll probably include a link to them as well. But certainly go and give him some love, give him a subscribe, give him a like, just so we could spread the love here. And so in order to use Frozen's expected favor cost per item, we first have to specify which are the um, event preferences that we like. So this is what I would go for is Abom, Emperor of Corpses, Mages, Rare Enemies, Shades of Orbis. All of these down here are good. And then for reward preferences, we only care about two. And it's the unique ring times three and unique ring times seven. We're also going to be applying rhyme and wealth. We need to switch this to accessory and then apply ring. I do believe this is the optimal setup we can go for. There's one minor thing that we need to change in the formula here. It's not quite accurate with the sum here. It has to be the average. We should also add Jora and rare enemies in dungeon as well as temporal sanctum basically anything on Temporal Sanctum. So once we're finished setting everything up, we get roughly 329 expected favor per item. And that is per unique ring. We can bring that over here. So this is unique rings per red ring. This is favor per unique ring. So here we have favor per red ring. And that is going to be simply the product of the two. So depending on how picky you are when it comes to your boss selection and whatever else, I was pretty picky right here. And based on being fairly picky, the expected favor per red ring is around 200k. If you don't mind running around and killing every single boss in every single monolith timeline, you can probably bring that down to, let's say, 190k. Let's say we get extremely picky and we only want Emperor of Corpses and Temporal Sanctum drops. When you get that picky, the favor per red ring becomes around 212,000. And so there you have it. We got four red rings that day. The probability of getting that was 11.67 exactly. So while we got somewhat lucky, it was not an extreme case of winning the lottery luck. And also, if you are in the business of farming red rings, expect to get a red ring on average per every single 200k favor spent on unique rings only. And by the way, let's run a little test here. 
Let's say that we got the dream scenario of getting the unique ring times three every single time. We didn't need to click reroll or anything like that. The favor per unique ring spent in that case, it's 291.67. So if you could hack the game and not need to reroll ever, the expected favor per red ring would be 176k. And that is completely unreasonable, obviously. So 200k, I think, is a pretty good estimate. So this was pretty fun right but now wait until you see what we're planning on for our next project here i'm trying to accumulate 48 slots each of them having a drop 14 unique rings in them which then gets doubled because we have cof level 12. if we can get all of that to explode off of a single enemy and if we can line all of these up all of these prophecy 48 of them to be dropped by killing Jora, we would get 1,344 unique rings dropped by Jora. So that's what we're trying to get next. It's a pretty ambitious project. My estimates are that it's going to cost around 800k favor. And there's a pretty good chance, if you ask Twitch chat, it's 100%, that we're going to crash the game and we're not going to get to see a single ring because of the stress that we're going to put on the game trying to roll 1,344 rings in such a short period of time. But we shall endure in the name of science. So if you're curious to see where this project is going to go, and if you're curious to see out of the 1,344 rings, how many red rings we're going to get, and let's just quickly plug that in right here. It's pretty easy to do. Here we go, 1,344. Uh, on average, we should expect around one to two red rings. But it's always possible to hit this 5%er and get five red rings. You never know. Anyways, if you're curious what what's going to end up happening, whether we're going to crush the game or whether we're going to get a sea of red rings, tune in on Twitch. I'm going to be doing it on Tuesday, August 27th. Hope to see you there. Much love. Take it easy. And go chiso samodeshta.